So I know I'm usually kind of passively a furry on this channel. I don't really talk about it. It's just that my Sona is on the screen. Um, but I recently came across a very unpleasant right-wing furry channel. Um, and while his content is both bad in a moral and production sense, um, he did make me think about something. So let's talk about it. The creator with the channel by the name of Panda the Man recently came up on my recommended. This video, uh, the video in question was titled, Bully Furries Meltdown Over Native American Fursuit. This isn't a review of that particular video, uh, but if you feel inclined to suffer through watching it, it will be linked below. However, for context, if you don't want to put yourself through that, um, the majority of it is spent defending a member of the fandom who has been known to cause problems and also made a headdress slash war bonnet for their suit um, while not being indigenous. The video annoyed me for obvious reasons, and I attempted to leave a comment explaining that while I'm not surprised a conservative would make a video like this, um, he does not have the right to tell indigenous people what we are and aren't allowed to be bothered by, especially regarding our own cultures, nor to tone police us about the subject. The comment, however, did not send, meaning he has either set comment filters on for specific words, or he has put his channel where every comment must be manually approved. I don't think I have to tell you why this is a problem while making political content, but I will just in case. It's creating an echo chamber and silencing critics. And when talking about serious political issues, um, yeah, that's both cowardly and irresponsible. After digging through his page a bit, I found a plethora of conservative content ranging from anger at MFF's COVID policies, a video defending Trump and Elon while simultaneously telling people not to suck their dicks, um, a review of Free For All, a conservative America-themed fur con that has been a notorious failure, and what I want to talk about here, um, a video encouraging conservative furries to make their own content titled, Furries Who Are Sick Of The Woke Crap, Create More And Complain Less. I'm not going to be playing any clips of his videos as my last video was demonetized for using music video clips uh, and because he very much seems like the type of person to try and strike a channel for using his content even if it's fair use. But the video that this is a response to will be linked below and please, I don't, it's sad that I have to say this, please don't harass him. Um, I know that he probably isn't going to allow comments anyway but he can still see them in YouTube studio. If you say something, be decent. The rest of this video is partially scripted. Um, while watching this video, I took notes on the specific things I wanted to talk about. Um, but before I get into any of that, I want to explain why the furry fandom is majority left-wing and always has been, or at least has not always been, conservative. Throughout multiple of this guy's videos, he talks as though conservative furries have been pushed out, as though they used to be the main ones, and now all the evil lefties are attacking the fandom and ruining it from the inside out. But it's worth noting that the furry fandom has always had a very large amount of LGBT people. And as the fandom grew, the more conservative and honestly modesty type people started causing problems for people who were just there to enjoy themselves because they felt the need to take some kind of moral crusade. Another aspect is that the furry fandom has always had aspects of sexuality throughout it, whether that be in an LGBT way or in a sex positive way. And while there's nothing wrong with being a furry and not wanting to partake in that part of the fandom, to pretend it was never there in the first place is very disingenuous, and it is a part of the reason that the furry fandom has always been more left-leaning, not just the sexuality as in gay whatever, but as in sex positive. It's very well known that conservatives are often religious and therefore not very sex positive. And to pretend as though conservatives have been pushed out of the fandom or as though this is a surprising new development is very dishonest. Furries are left-leaning because furries are LGBT people. Furries are kinky people. Furries are people that society sees as deviant even if they're neither of those things. And conservatism, conservatism does not lend itself well to anything that is outside tradition or norm. Which, yes, even includes the most safe-for-work, cishet furry you've ever known. <laughs> conservatism is quite literally called conservatism. It is about tradition and maintaining tradition, which we will definitely get to as he decides to talk about and glorify the American 50s. But with that out of the way, um, let's just get into it. The first note that I have in my notes while watching this video um, is something that's not a major part of the video, but was pretty annoying, which is him essentially undermining concerns about Nazis in the fandom. Repeatedly saying things like that people are overreacting to it or blowing it out of proportion. And while I'm not at all saying this guy is a Nazi, I don't believe that to be true just because he's a conservative, he definitely seems unconcerned with that population being a part of the fandom. I don't really have a lot to add to that, um, other than the fact that it very much weirded me out and I felt the need to say it. 
The next thing that he goes on to talk about for a couple minutes, and honestly the rest of the video, but particularly this line, is that it is not just that the quote-unquote woke furries run the conventions and in-person events and stuff, but that they are the quote-unquote popular ones, saying that all of the, as he calls them, furry influencers are left-leaning. And the wording used in this portion of the video, I think, is very much adjacent to people like Ron DeSantis or even like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, whatever. Essentially being like, we're the little guy. Um, we are being stepped on by everyone around us. Everyone else is getting all of this influence and popularity. Why aren't we? And almost reminiscent of like conspiracy theory language. I'm not saying he's calling it a conspiracy theory. I don't think he's saying that. But the language used is very similar to people talking about like deep state bullshit. And as the video goes on, he continues to bring this point up that all of the furries who are creating content that may not necessarily be political, things like fursuits, YouTube videos that aren't political, popular artists to commission, etc., that while they are not making their art itself to be political, if you go scroll through their Twitter, you'll see things, as he says, calling them party slogans for things like BLM or ACAB. And the rest of the video is mostly spent talking about the fact that while these people's art itself may not be inherently political, that they will not want to do business with you if you disagree with their politics, and that the fact that their art is enjoyed for its entertainment value, not its political value, exposes more people to a left-leaning ideology simply by default of enjoying their non-political content and then following them and getting these things on their feed or whatever. And when he says creating content in the title of this video, I expected him to mean that he wanted to see more conservative commentators, considering that that's mostly what his channel is. But interestingly, but I guess sort of not, um, because this kind of sounds shady, um, is that he's saying that conservatives should basically create more non-political art and do what leftist furries are doing and promote their art for what it is. It's a fursuit, it's a drawing, it's whatever. But then post conservative things and mentioning people who used to do that, but now don't anymore because they got quote unquote canceled. And essentially saying you shouldn't care if you're canceled, just keep doing it. And if people like your content, then they'll start to agree with you basically. And I know that that sounds like a bit of a stretch from what I've said so far of him thinking that people will start to agree with you on that basis, but the video is just at the beginning. Before I continue with the more kind of overarching themes of my video along with the comparison to his, that being cancel culture and content creation, I want to just touch on some of the smaller notes that I made because although they're not entirely what the video is about and I think him saying them were just off-color comments throughout the video, I feel like it would be wrong to not say anything about them. One thing that he says um, in this video and in other videos is that no matter how good your arguments are, people just don't want to change their minds. And while I definitely think to a degree that can be true, I've seen that with my own content and other people's content, um, I think that that is a little bit disingenuous because his content is mostly rants. And even though I don't think that this guy is a great person, I'm not saying that to diminish it. One of my favorite YouTubers, Jacqueline Glenn, predominantly creates content ranting, but she's educated on what she's talking about. And there's a cohesive meaning behind what the content is other than these people are stupid because they disagree with me. Which I think is exemplified in the fact that I made a note that just says the term quote idiots lol and quote woke mob. Just pointing out that he said those things because he consistently says things like that. And honestly, this is a cr like tip for this guy if he sees this. I don't want your content to get good like because you don't have good views, um, and I am definitely not the epitome of creating content, but this is like a very basic thing, right? If you were trying to reach people who maybe disagree with you and either get them to agree with you or at least see your perspective on things, you have to treat them like people and be sympathetic. Sympathetic is maybe even a strong word. You have to be decent to them. Calling people woke idiots is not going to get anyone on the left to listen to you. I make a lot of content that I think is targeted at people who don't agree with me, although it's not usually conservatives. And while I definitely have fallen into letting my anger about certain things get the better of me and calling people stupid or ignorant or whatever, um, I try very hard not to do that because people click off your video when they do that. And the only reason I didn't click off your video was because it was upsetting enough that I wanted to respond to it. And it's another one of those kind of conservative, and I think, I don't know what this guy's religious beliefs are, but they tend to go hand in hand and Christians do it too. So conservative Christian type thing of blaming everyone else around you for your own failings and victimizing yourself because of it, despite the fact that you just aren't doing the right thing. And this isn't necessarily to say that he makes good arguments or well-researched arguments outside of this either. 
Um, I think a very big part of making political content is knowing what the hell you're talking about. And again, it seems more like angry rants, but without the aspect of a creator like Jacqueline Glenn, who actually does know what she's talking about, she's just also ranting about it. So it's very frustrating to see, I mean, this is a common thing again with conservatives, but to see people act like everyone else around them is just unreasonable and they're making good arguments. But actually, they're just insulting the people who disagree with them and then rambling about how much better it was in the 1950s, which is, yes, actually something he said. I'm going to move on to the main kind of rest of the two major points about this video, but I wanted to point that out because I have a feeling that he's going to see this video because his channel is smaller. And it's very important to know, like, people aren't listening to you because blah, 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 actual reason or people aren't listening to you because they have some kind of agenda or they're refusing to see the other side. Because there are people on every side of the political spectrum that are like that. And to a degree, I think most people are like that to some level. But that's very different than what's happening with your channel, which is you are outwardly insulting people, making uneducated, unresearched arguments that are hate-fueled, and then saying, wah, wah, why is no one listening to me? I'm just expressing my opinion like everyone else. So moving on to the rest of the video. Obviously, like I said before, the main point of this video was to encourage conservative furries to both share their views, but make content that isn't about their views, essentially to get people to like their art and then stick around for the politics. And while I don't inherently think this is a bad thing, I mean, I don't, I know definitely with my original animation channel, I shared my politics on that channel and I made animation and some people agreed with me and some people got mad at me. Um, and I still share my opinions on that channel as well, on my community tab and my other social medias associated with it. And I have this channel now. And there's not anything inherently wrong with making non-political art and sharing your political opinions beside it. But the problem is that this video is essentially sounding like a way to instruct conservative people of creating propaganda. There's even a point at the uh, end of the video where he talks about this author that was really good and then he started putting leftist politics into his book and saying, you guys should steal his niche for the other side. And he quite literally calls this author's uh, political work propaganda while also telling people to quote unquote, steal his niche in his exact words. I also think it's worth pointing out that the reason that um, artists who are leftists and popular don't get their channels or their accounts or whatever canceled, quote unquote, um, while sharing their political opinions is because the furry fandom is majority left. And again, like I said at the beginning, for a reason. The furry fandom is filled with people whose human rights are benefited by supporting the left side of the political spectrum. And he brings up other creators who used to be popular until they shared their political views. And it's like, yeah, people don't want to follow someone that doesn't want them to have human rights, whether or not they like their art. And he goes on to talk about how outside the fandom, he knows conservatives who love a certain music artist and, but they're, they don't like the guy's politics, but hey, his music's still good, right? And saying, why can't we do that in the fandom? And the problem is that leftists kind of don't do that. That's a conservative thing. Leftists don't give money to people that don't want them to have human rights. It is much easier for someone who is conservative, who already has all of the rights, who already has all the things that they want, and who is not at immediate threat by supporting a different political spectrum, to just go, eh, I can listen to this song, it's fine, I don't really care that much, it's annoying, but whatever, than it is for an LGBT person or a person of color to listen to an artist who is outwardly saying that they should not be allowed to exist or that they should be punished for existing that the way that they do. And I think it speaks very much to the fact that conservatives are privileged in the area, that they are mostly white, straight, cis men, um, or white, straight, cis women who have internalized sexism. Y'all don't have a horse in the race, so you don't care as much. And obviously you don't really interact with a lot of left-wing people, at least who feel strongly about their views as you do, um, outside of the fandom. People who aren't in the fandom and are left-leaning also don't do that. It just so happens that the majority of the fandom is left-leaning, again, for the reasons that I already explained. So the majority of the people in the fandom don't want to support someone that they find morally bad. <laughs> That's not to say that you maybe don't think that leftists, leftists are, or woke people or whatever the hell you call them are morally bad. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. Um, but again, you don't have a horse in the race for this. You don't have personal stake in your actual well-being being put at risk for these things. 
It's not a furry problem, and it's not a left-wing problem, it's a privilege problem. And I know, conservative, you're gonna throw a fit at the word privilege, I'm sure. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to not care about someone else's politics because they don't affect your ability to live your life safely. It is a privilege to be apolitical, and it is a privilege to be conservative and not be damaged by the laws you're voting for. The other portion of this video that I want to talk about is that he talks about cancel culture and that mentioning creators who were very popular until they shared their conservative views and then they backed down and now every time they make like every time they come out of the void and maybe say something every few months they get attacked and telling people to not care if you're canceled and to keep making content i don't inherently have an issue with this i think to say i was canceled on my warriors channel is a bit of a stretch um considering that that channel still exists and has more subscribers than this one and I also didn't lose a meaningful amount of subscribers from that either. It was essentially for being a trans medicalist. But yeah, me deciding to continue creating content and be annoyed at those people, but still keep doing what I'm doing anyways, I think was beneficial for me. Um, I enjoy making content, so I make content. But I think the problem here is that it's done with this like political motive of you shouldn't care if you're canceled because you should keep pushing our politics as opposed to you shouldn't care if you're canceled. If you like making content, make content. And there's also a very big difference between people who are canceled for stupid things and serious things. The furry fandom ranges from people being canceled for internal friendship group drama to being actual sex criminals. So it's not really reasonable to just say canceled in the furry fandom. There is no, like, universal you should or shouldn't support this person who's canceled in the fandom. Because, again, ranges from internal friendship or relationship drama to literal sex criminals. <laughs> For some artists that I still follow that were canceled for not completing commissions when they were a teenager and it was a decent amount of money, but you know, maybe they don't take commissions anymore and they just post their art still. That's fine. I'm not giving them money, whatever. I, their art is nice. Whatever. Uh, there's a difference between that, which is like not great, but it's not the end of the world. You can still like, like their tweet. Um, and someone who literally wants to take human rights away, those are not the same thing. Um, neither of them are good things. They are very much not the same thing. That's not me saying you should stop creating content if you were canceled for being conservative or whatever. At the end of the day, that's not my problem. The problem is that you whine about not getting views or not getting people supporting you over this. And no one is obligated to support someone that they find harmful. Whether that's because of something stupid like relationship drama in the fandom or something serious. It really does not matter. No one is obligated to support someone that they have a problem with. And while I don't think you are outwardly saying that people are required to do that or that people are expected to do that, I do think that there is an implicit kind of thing about furries who find out that someone is conservative and stop following them that it's wrong that they do that. And I'm sorry, but it's not. Um, there are furries that are on the left that I agree, or I agree with some of their opinions and not others. And I follow them and some furries that I agree with some of their opinions and not others and I don't. It really doesn't matter. No one is obligated to give you views or money or attention or to agree with you. There are plenty of furries who disagree with my political opinions despite me being on the left. And while I think that they are somewhat annoying about it, they are not obligated to watch my content. They are not obligated to follow me. They are not even obligated to be nice to me. As long as they're not sending me death threats or, like, doxing me or whatever, they're not obligated to do any of that. If they want to make a rude tweet about me, if they want to leave an assholey comment, whatever. It's the internet. Leave a funny reply. Block them. Ignore it. Move on. It is not that big of a deal. And this whole video honestly sounds like you whining about the fact that conservatives don't get as many views in the fandom when, again, it's because most of the fandom is having their human rights taken away by people like you. Anyway, that's where I'm going to cut off the video. I could probably keep rambling about this, but I'm starting to repeat myself, so we're done here. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk about this, I guess, because I see a lot of conservative furries have this mindset. Not just this guy, but it was the example that popped up on my recommended, so it's the one I talked about. But there seems to be a very common mindset against conservative furries, um, or about from conservative furries. And I think that a lot of them fail to see the fact that people don't have to support them, that they are not a victim, and also that it's the internet. Move on with your life. Um, yeah, so that's all I got. Hade. Hade. I the populace in prayer.